talking about health care in Nashville and a plan to treat some of Nashville's poorest residents. We have with us Dr. James Hildreth. He is the president of Meharry Medical College and is really kind of behind a bold new proposal that we have been talking about. Um, and we're getting a lot of calls. So let's just go back to the phones here. Let's go to James. James, are you there? Yes. Go right ahead. Yes, thank you for taking my call. I was wondering, um, I, I know the last mayor wanted to shut down uh, Nashville General uh, because of the budget, strain on the budget. I was wondering, uh, have the Nashville General ever consider a partnership with the federal government, meaning like Department of Veterans Affairs, where they have an excess of veterans, you know, maybe waiting to be seen and maybe uh, have a partnership for like the primary care or even some specialty clinics like, you know, um, endo, internal, internal meds or ortho. And uh, I was, uh, thank you for uh, uh, letting me speak. Thank you. Thanks for that call. That's interesting. What, what about that? So I think uh, the caller has identified uh, really one of the viable options that we're pursuing is to uh, have an expanded partnership with the VA. Uh, people may not be aware of this, but there's already a veteran clinic, veterans clinic in Nashville General. It's called a community-based outpatient clinic, CBOC. Uh, and that, that has been there for quite a long time. So one of the opportunities that we're pursuing is the, is the possibility that maybe the VA could expand its presence um, on the campus and therefore contribute to, again, a self-sustaining um, you know, system, and that's one of that's one of the things that we're certainly uh, mindful of, and we are having conversations about that. How are those conversations going, and uh, how realistic is that? Do you think? Well, I think the caller is right that Tennessee happens to be ranked rather low for wait times and and perceived quality of services for some of the the, the veterans. And so I think there's, if there's an opportunity for NGH and Meharry to be part of the solution, we certainly will want to do that. Uh, but I mean, I can't really say that, that it's going to happen soon or, or not, but those conversations are, in fact, happening. Interesting. All right, let's go to Paul. Hello, Paul. Are you there, Paul? Hello. Hello. Go right ahead, Paul. Hey, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to the doctor. Um, look, uh, I have never personally been a patient at Meharry, but I have been to that hospital numerous times visiting friends and on some business, uh, uh, some business that I had to do at the hospital there. And I'd just like to say this, um, Meharry Hospital is one of the great diamonds in Nashville. It, it is a jewel, and it really is. And the people that work there are a jewel, and they help people. And they take people that other people don't have, uh, won't take. And uh, I was, you know, I, I took exception with one of the callers a while ago. He was talking about uh, um, it's socialized medicine. He's trying to get socialized medicine. Well, you know what? That's a bunch of crap. That, that's right wing bull crap that they're feeding people now. And you know what that's saying? Let's just say it. Let's just say it. They don't care about poor people. I mean, there ain't no other way to put it. You just don't care about poor people. That's all it is. Well, I'm a tax player. And I'm double insured. I have insurance on myself for my employment, and my wife has insurance on me. I have two two uh, insurances. And I'll tell you what, the quality of care at Meharry, I would I would go there myself and put it up against anybody. And God bless that doctor there, and I hope that he gets this program through because all he is trying to do is help people. Yes. And you know what? I don't, uh, the, the society they done got ridiculous. Let's help people and quit trying all this <laughs> bull crap uh, political mess. Y'all have a good day. God bless you. All right. Thank you, Paul. Well, what do you I, think of that? I do appreciate the, the caller's comments. And as I said earlier, the Nashville General and Meharry attracts individuals who are committed to our mission. And for us at Meharry, you know, we were founded in 1876, so we've been doing this for 143 years. And people may not know this story, but Meharry was founded by a gift from the Meharry family to start a medical department in Central Tennessee College because at the time, African Americans primarily and other poor and indigent individuals had nowhere else to go to be trained as physicians. Uh, another story that people may not know is that in the 60s, Jewish medical students could not gain admission to medical schools 
white Jewish students in the South, so Meharry took them. So we've trained a lot of students who couldn't go anywhere else. We've done the same thing for patients uh, over and over again. So he's right that we do take patients that otherwise would not be treated. And I think Meharry and NGH are proud of that legacy that we have together. It's in the news today. They're talking about health care again in the federal government. Yes. Um, what impact would that have? Uh, currently, um, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, is, is, is the law. Um, they're talking about changing, dismantling again. What impact does that have on what, what you're talking about here? Well, as you know, Tennessee chose not to expand uh, Medicaid, which left 300,000 folks, I believe, without uh, coverage that otherwise would have had it. And so that means that the mission that we have in NGH is more important than ever in Tennessee because we're committed to making sure those individuals are taken care of. Now mind you, the, the state of Tennessee has been very innovative in a lot of ways, uh, with creating Tim Care and some other things that have been done. So I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, disparaging the leadership because I think they've done a great job of some innovative programs that have helped a lot of people. But the, but the, the, the fact is that hundreds of thousands of individuals who would have gotten coverage if we had expanded Medicaid don't have it. So it's imperative that we keep the programs at NGH and the kinds of things that we do, we keep them going. Um, but, you know, 12 million or 13 million people who didn't have insurance got it because of, of the health care plan, the health care that was uh, put in place. And probably about 40 or 50 million people with pre-existing con pre conditions would be impacted by this if they were done. So I'm hoping if they undo it, they'll have something to replace it because it is desperately needed. Let's go to Terry. Hello, Terry. Terry, are you there? <laughs> Terry? Yes. All right, go right ahead. Uh, Terry? Yes, you can go ahead. You may need to turn down oh, your TV, okay. but go right ahead, right? You yeah. go ahead. Uh, I want to commend the doctor for what he's trying to do. Uh, I really appreciate it. This is more of a vet call than anything else. I am sick and tired of people talking about socialized medicine and socialized this and whatnot. We need to take care of our people. We're the richest nation on the face of this earth, and we can't even, when it comes to taking care of our people, it's just sickening. Now, what I wish these people to talk about socialized medicine and whatnot, I don't mean to be mean-spirited and whatnot, but they need to walk in the shoes of someone else, you know? Can you imagine being a parent and your child is sick and you, you can't get them to a hospital or your spouse is sick or whatnot? Well, we can spend all this money on trying to build walls and everything else. Now, I got three insurances. You know, I got three insurance programs. I go to VA, I have child care, and I have Medicare. So I'm not someone that doesn't have insurance. We need to take care of our people. If we can bail out car companies, if we can support Boeing and all these other people that rip off the governments and whatnot. We don't have an outcry on that. But the minute you start talking about taking care of our own people, and health care is a right for everybody, for everyone. And I want to get off the phone before I start using some curse words or something, because it just makes me sick when these people start talking about socialized. I don't want it because of socialized and everything else. It's easy if you have insurance or you're a billionaire to talk about this, that, and the other. When these people start <laughs> talking about insurance. And okay. Whatnot. All right. Well, thank off, you. Let me get off this soapbox. All right. All right. Thank, thank you, you for your call. So, second caller um, saying they don't like hearing about socialized medicine. Um, and, and that's fine. But I think the concern is you had Mayor Barry who was concerned about the cost mm -hmm. and wanted to use those resources for something else, teacher raises or something like that. Well, so w how can we address all but of I, this? But I think in fairness to the mayor, uh, it is reasonable to ask health care leaders to demonstrate what what is being delivered? What is the product? What am I getting for this amount of money? And one of the things that this plan does, it, it establishes some quality metrics, some deliverables that are measurable, that we can actually demonstrate that for the amount of money that you're going to provide in a subsidy or whatever, here's what's going to be delivered. And we can actually follow and demonstrate that as a, as a group, the health of indigent in the Nashville community has improved or not and we can be, it can be held accountable for that. 
Um, and one of the things that I really like about the proposal is that we're going to use the power of data analytics to make sure that the care that's provided to these individuals is uniquely suited to their needs. Because there's a lot of, in medicine where we think that our treatment plan for Mr. X will work for Mr. Y when in fact it needs to be something different. And that's the power of using uh, data analytics and that's included in this plan. Let's go to Lucy. Hello Lucy. Hey. Great to hear from you Lucy. What's on your mind? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got a question, but I, I'd like to make a couple comments here. Mm -hmm. I have been to Meharry. It, it was back in the 70s. Meharry took me when I was in the period, and it wasn't a big deal back in the 70s if you didn't have insurance. But they took me when I was out of pocket with no insurance. But when I had great insurance, Parkview Hospital took me. They are the ones that got me a uh, staph infection that wouldn't go away. It almost killed me. It made me septic. But when I went back to them and I no longer had my insurance, they wouldn't accept me. But Meharry took me and took care of me. So I can't complain about Meharry at all. General Hospital, from what I understand, the city's been trying to dump that hospital since they start coming up for uh, uh, medicine for profit ideas in the 40s here and they made these models. These HMOs and PPOs have done nothing but create a middleman which has driven up the, the cost of health care. We didn't have all that until the 80s. So uh, when you say that the poor are really bankrupting the system, I think people really need to take a look at this and understand. I talk to people every day that say they went to a ER in their network, but somebody read an x-ray that was not in the network, although exactly. their network told them that was a network ER, and they got a bill for $10,000. So it's gotten ridiculous. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you can blame it on the poor people. So here's my question, uh, sir. Uh, Matthew Walker Clinic, uh, are y'all tying that clinic in or is it already tied in to your health care model over there at, at General to kind of help reduce this and sort people out where they can get the most efficient care for the least dollar, if you understand my question, yes. if I'm making any sense. I do. Now I'm a little ticked off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's answer that. Lucy, thanks for the call. What so about that? thank you for that uh, question. Matthew Walker is what's known as a federally qualified health center. There are about 11,000 of these centers in the United States. And what happens is these centers are paid to provide primary care and preventive medicine to anybody who shows up regardless of your ability to pay and they get reimbursed for those services through the federal government and the idea is to create these safety net clinics in communities where they're most needed and again what the proposal does is it links the federally qualified health centers neighborhood health uh, connect us health matthew walker to nashville general to the big three to the to the major hospital system in other words what we're trying to do is to integrate the services of each of those components into a continuum of care that provides the best care to individuals. And that's what I mean that Nashville is rich, has a rich health care ecosystem, but is disconnected. And what the caller pointed out is a major problem in health care that information flow is a, is a huge problem. So there are silos, and these silos create disconnected, disjointed, reactive care rather than proactive care. And she's absolutely right. You may call your insurer to find out if a hospital or ED is in your network, but they have no way of knowing that the doctor who's going to do the procedure is not. And so even though they cover the hospital costs, the physician costs will not be covered. And that's, that's part of the challenge we have in our healthcare system. And part of what's in this proposal is an information transfer system to make sure that doesn't happen. So again, we're trying to do everything we can do to keep the cost as low as possible. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this.